Hey there, welcome to the Maddie B Files. I'm the host, Matt Bigelow, the podcast that broadcasts Tokyo subculture. Today on the podcast, we got、um, Gravy Train, which is a duo、uh, from Japan and Australia. To be specific, Darwin, Australia. A place that I've heard plenty about but have never been. We talk about it on today's podcast about the Australian music scene, his Japan tour. I think he's doing like 70 shows in three months, and his approach to music.、Um, yeah, we also horse around a bit and talk shit. It's a really, really fun conversation.、Uh, but first, I, I'd like to talk about first world problems. These are the best problems. And I, I, had, I had quite the first world problem today. My,、uh, my, my CD DVD reader for my computer, I think it bit the dust. I, I, I was playing a CD yesterday, which is something I rarely do. And when the CD finished, it, the computer ejected the CD. When I tried to put it back in, couldn't read it. I spent hours troubleshooting it only to find、uh, useless, useless. I mean, The internet is becoming such a, a place where everything gets uploaded. So, you, your problems, your first world problems are 27, of 2017. When you go to try to find your solutions to these first world problems of 2017, you get like pages and pages of links that like link you to first world problems of 2010. With all the software updates and computer changes and all that, there is no such thing as, as, as first world problems from 2010 anymore.、Uh, there is like, you know, Choose some software CDs and try scanning them for errors. I'm like, oh, dude, this is 2017, man. I can't use this. When's the last time anyone bought software CDs and it wasn't downloaded from the cloud? I mean, that's what we, we download from the cloud. We drop and drag and download from the cloud. We don't insert CDs. We don't have. One through six of a, of a game. We, we don't have to go and insert CD number two into the drive anymore. Maybe you do. I don't. I live a life that is very limited in that regard. s I don't game. I'm not a gamer. I was looking on Twitch and I, I was wondering what the deal is with Twitch. I, I, I spent a good number of time on Twitch looking at people playing their games and I. I It felt like most of the time people were waiting for games to load and were having conversations of, like, of, the, of the magnitude that resembles people on Xanax kind of droning on. And I might be onto something there. Twitch is just full of people on Xanax waiting for games to load. And I don't know why they have billions of views, but good on them. Wow. I certainly don't. I chose something called music to focus my life on, not video games. Oh, what a fool. What a fool walking around with an acoustic wooden box that goes plonk, plonk, plonk. How foolish. Oh, but my first world problems. So I don't know what I'm going to do about it.、Um, certainly, I, I don't want to replace my CD drive.、Uh, less CDs in my life, the better, to be honest.、Um, Even though a lot of the people I interview release CDs, <laughs> and I have done so in the past too. But、uh, I think it's a good way for musicians to maybe if the fans, not fans, but listeners after a show, they want to express appreciation, they can walk away with something in their hands called a CD and it has a picture and there's art and stuff. And I get that. So if you see a good show, everyone, even though you don't really need a CD player or a CD, buy a CD. Support the artist, and when you get home, you can upload it or download it, anyways. I bought a record a couple of years ago, Chili Gonzalez, some piano stuff, and it came inside in the, in the, in the record package. It came with a download card, and I would download the card. So I have the record and the download card. I thought that was a cool combination. I tried it, but I'm not really good at promoting my own music, to be honest. I don't know why. Come see me sometime. All right, before we get into the interview, I would just like to go over some crucial yet odd Japanese news.、Um, we got some news oddities.、Uh, the first one is going to be called a, there's a new policy that's being reviewed. Sorry, it's an old policy that's being reviewed, and it has to do with blood. 
Japan's health ministry plans to approve the export of blood products after the practice was banned over half a century ago. The ministry will make a formal decision on the measures by the end of the year and revise relevant regulations as early as 2018. Up until now, blood products were only approved for domestic use, and any excess stocks had to be destroyed. The health ministry now plans to allow the export of excess blood products to developing countries in short supply. It plans to approve products from three Japanese firms. Exporters would be required to report how much is being shipped every month. The government could still suspend exports if concerns arise about inadequate domestic supplies. Blood products are made from donated blood. They are used mainly for transfusions during operations and for the treatment of hemophilia. So there you go. Getting the blood back out there. Shipping blood. A few questions, though. How do you destroy excess blood? Do you boil it? Do you just throw it down the drain? Do you mix it with chemicals and secretly hide it in the forest? What do you do with, with excess blood? And secondly... How one thing I've always was like wondering about is what? How do they store and ship blood? And who does the driver of the truck know he's driving a bunch of blood? I used to have this dark fantasy that when you went to the Red Cross blood donation, um, all all of the blood was being mixed together and just kind of filled up in the back of a truck, like a blood bathtub. And the truck would drive away, just f the, 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 the tractor trailer. The trailer would be filled to the brim with everyone's blood sloshing around, mixing together on its way to the donation centers. Well, I don't know. People say they donate blood. They need blood. Uh, maybe Japanese blood. I don't know. Maybe it'll make people study harder once it's uh, <laughs> shipped abroad. Who knows? Very mysterious, though, that such a rule was employed in play and uh, who knows about this weird weird blood thing and the next story is about a guy who stole a garbage truck a 25 year old man according to police has admitted to the charge and quoted him as saying he was drunk and couldn't be bothered to go home on a crowded subway train he also said he didn't have enough money for a taxi so he stole a garbage truck Police say the incident occurred just before 8 a.m. on the morning of July 28 in Rapungi. So this is old news. Um, the guy who lives in Edogawa Ward and works at a Rapungi bar told police he was drinking until 6 a.m. That happens in Rapungi. Rapungi sucks. Rather than try to get on a subway during rush hour, he spotted a parked garbage truck. The driver was behind the truck as garbage was being loaded. Uh, Honma, the accused, got in and drove for about three kilometers to JR Shimbashi Station where he abandoned the truck. Before he stole the truck, Honma was seen on the street surveillance camera footage trying to open the doors of cars in a parking lot. What a scumbag. He also asked the driver of another garbage truck if you could give him a lift as far as Kachidoki and Chua Ward. You couldn't walk three kilometers? Police said Homa, who does not have a driver's license, was charged with violation of the road traffic law. Wow. Uh, of course, that's a boozy decision, isn't it? Hmm. Hmm. Well, there we go. That's the next news. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Could you steal a garbage truck? I don't know if I could. All right. The next one is about space. Space. Japan is proposing to take part for the first time in multilateral tabletop space war games led by the U.S. military, an outline of a revised roadmap of Tokyo's basic space policy shows. Japan also wants to send astronauts to the lunar surface in cooperation with Washington. The multilateral project, which has been running since 2001, will involve tabletop exercises to simulate respondents to electronic jamming and attacks on participating countries' satellites that those involved believe could be realistic threats in around 10 years' time. In 2016, Britain, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, France, and Germany joined the war game. Pretty Western, isn't it? The revised roadmap also incorporates a plan to participate in a space station project. The proposal in which the United States aspires to put a spacecraft on the moon's orbit in the 2020s will allow Japan to pursue its goal of landing astronauts on the moon. Under the updated space policy, the Japan Japanese government plans to make available data it owns, such as satellite images, to private enterprises free of charge so they can use it to create new businesses. 
I don't know if that will work, but I think some of the idea is to um, harvest astronauts, not astronauts, <laughs> harvest um, asteroids, our satellites, we can call them like organic satellites uh, with satellites. So we take our artificial satellites. Oh, that's right. This was like a, a NASA thing. You send out um, a satellite that basically two satellites, but it's joined together. You send it out towards an astronaut. Uh, not an astronaut, you fucking asshole. You send it out to um, an asteroid or, you know, a space rock. Then one part of the satellite lands on the, on the, on the space rock. And it, uh, the other uh, satellite spins around the orbit of the space rock. And these two things together can, um, over time, with, with like uh, gravity, a circulation of gravity... Uh, change the orbit of the sa of the space rock, eventually getting it into the lunar orbit, and then we can um, use the materials on those space rocks uh, on Earth if we need to. Um, it's been said that the the first trillionaire will be the first, you know, company, group, organization, whatever, to harvest space rocks and put them into orbit. We don't want them around Earth's orbit because we don't know what's on them if they have like you know, viruses that are dormant, um, or some sort of chemical composition that could be poisonous. So when we orbit them around the moon, it's basically a death zone that won't be affected by the potential dangers of foreign sports space rocks. So there we go. And then of course, if we have valuable space rocks orbiting the moon, um, we want to protect them. So this this uh, this competition, this multilateral tabletop space war games led by the U.S. military, could be um, you know finding ways to prevent future attacks not only on satellites on that are orbiting Earth, but satellites that are being harvested in space. It's, it's, once you think about the technical definition of a satellite, it's like we got the robotic satellites, but we also got the space rocks. And then I get confused as to if it's an astro. Of course, it's not an astronaut. We're not going to go out and harvest astronauts in space. But if it's uh, an asteroid or uh, you know comets, of course, I can get a handle on. But all, all of a sudden, when the mind has to leap into the memory of all of this space data, you're like, "Whoa, where did that come from?" Anyways, so that's uh, that's that. Next news: We got, um, of course, if you've ever been in Japan and especially Tokyo the convenience store plays a major part of your daily life and they are very competitive with each other and when i had the living deads on the podcast back in the summer they were saying that the food in japanese convenience stores is better than the food in most american restaurants and uh, so you get a very high quality daily service um, it's possible in fact to spend a lot of money at the convenience store over the months but that's why you'll see in some uh, busier intersections in Tokyo, they'll have a family mart on one side of the intersection and across the street, another family mart. And then like 50 feet, a, a 7-Eleven. And then uh, behind the next store will be a Lawson or, or something like that. So all of these stores compete with each other. And now because of the competition that's just getting you know more and more or the increased competition between them they're expanding into services that convenience stores have never been in before hit it ray convenience store chains in japan are looking for ways to boost sales amid fierce competition in a bid to attract customers companies are branching out with new business tie-ups Japan's biggest chain, 7-Eleven, recently launched a bicycle sharing service in partnership with SoftBank. Bikes can be reserved online, then picked up and dropped off at any affiliated store location. 7-Eleven Japan plans to expand the service to 1,000 outlets nationwide. I hope bike users will drop by our stores to shop. I believe the new system will attract more customers. The second largest chain in Japan, Family Mart, has a slightly different strategy. It plans to open a store with a 24-hour fitness club directly above it in February and another with a laundromat service next spring. The company plans to open hundreds of these multi-function stores within the next two to five years. 
The number three chain, Lawson, has been offering nursing care consultation services since Lawson. 2015. The company now provides a service at more they than 10 townies. stores. Advice from certified nursing care workers or care managers is available free of charge. Customers can also purchase a variety of nursing care goods in stock. So there you have it. One's, one, one chain is launching um, bicycles that you can ride from one 7-Eleven to another. You get off, you go in, you get what you need, you get on another shared bicycle. could be fun. That would be a good day for tourists, by the way. Um, if you could find out the location of the sub, of the 7-Elevens that have the bicycle rentals, you could just go from one 7-Eleven, buy a bunch of beers, put them in the basket um, of the bicycle, bike around town till you find another one, go in, stock up, get some sandwiches. And that, you know, th that would be a good way to see the city and uh, explore the fine offerings of the 7-Eleven. And then I'm not sure about the nursing consultation. That's, oh, that's because Lawson has a, um, a sister company or spinoff company called Natural Lawson. And at Natural Lawson, they offer higher end goods as well as pharmacy. They have like a pharmacy service. So I think sometimes these pharmacy services get introduced at Natural Lawson as a um, test run and then based on the success rate they will expand it into other lawsons and having a gym above a convenience store would be rather convenient i like that idea i used to go to the gym a lot i've stopped in the past two years and the effects have been tremendously horrible and i would like to get back into it but uh, the gym membership just kept on increasing and increasing and i only used the gym for like weights and running and things like that um, and they kept on getting more swimming pools and then golf lessons. And then they had an English school and the price just getting, we kept getting higher and higher. And I'm, I've got sick of paying these increased fees. So having just like a bunch of machines where you go up, bring a towel, you sweat it out and then go back. Boom. Yeah. That's, that's my style. That's my style. Totally. That might be an idea for 2017. Finally, before getting into the podcast, we have the abdication is being announced of the Japanese emperor. I don't really care so much, but it's kind of indicative of uh, of this time, the past hundred years, where we had Queen Elizabeth, we had the Thai king, the Japanese king, all of these monarchs, the, a lot of the, the, the uh, uh, not Ireland, um, and you know the the. Holland and all these other places, the Dutch or something like that, those insignificant countries that somehow make the news and keep being countries in the north of Europe below Scandinavia, they, uh, the Belgian king or something like that, they, a lot of those guys are getting old too, and they're going to be dying soon. And then this next era is going to be upon us where the, it's going to be the first time where monarchs entering the monarchy are going to be sort of secondary or tertiary figures compared to, say, tech companies, compared to, say, celebrity culture or, or uh, social media and things like that. So I, I imagine people of the future, historians of the future, will be looking back at the past century, say, 1911 to 2017, whatever, you know, and they will be associating um, the the changes of our century to the lifespan of these monarchs. And um, it, it, I kind of get this feeling where if I could imagine myself 200 years from now reading the books that these people will have written, and it, it, I, I would be very curious to see what kind of connections they are making. Um, so that's just an idea. All right. Please subscribe and like the show. Please tell a friend. If you're if you know a musician who's coming to Tokyo, uh, you can recommend this podcast for an interview. Um, they it's, it can be a nice way to to boost up your presence, your music presence while while abroad. And it's a a document of your tour of Japan, what you've done, what you've thought, and it will be up on the internet and will be available in the podcast land. Uh, it's not all YouTube. It's not all Facebook. Uh, podcasts are a lot more permanent where somebody who becomes interested in your work can then find out a little bit more about you. And I'm a musician too. So it's musicians talking to musicians about music. Uh, and yeah, there we go. So yeah, tell a friend, 
support the show. I don't really ask for much, to be honest. And I'm only starting to do this because, um, well, I'm moving into show 100 and uh, I'd like to just, you know, share and subscribe, share and subscribe. Make sure you share and subscribe. Thank you very much. So this uh, this interview was co-produced by Inter Aidoru. Um, she, the, she or the people that run Inter, uh, it's Inter Idol, basically, and they, they organize your Japanese tour. So if you're a musician and you're coming to Japan, but you don't know what to do and you're so confused because you don't have the language skills, you don't know which clubs are good clubs, you don't know which clubs have sound equipment, which ones don't, contact Inter Idoru. They will sort you out. The notes are in the description here. Um, uh, a lot of the people that have come on this podcast were referenced by Inter Idoru and um, they've had good things to say about the company. So uh, I don't, I don't associate, I don't have anything to do with Inter Idoru. They just help me out with the podcast and the guests on the podcasts have said favorable things about it. So if you have a Japanese tour or you're interested in touring Japan, check out some of the other interviews I've done with the, the other musicians as well as contact Inter Idoru. Okay. Now we're going to introduce the um, guest uh, Gravy Train. We are going to be playing his song. Uh, what's the song title? Holy shit. The Budgie. Of course it's The Budgie. We'll be introducing The Budgie, which is already playing in the background. We'll come back on the other side of this song. So we're going to listen to the song. And then on the other side of the song, we'll be with the people who made this song. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the introduction. Hope you stick around for the interview. If you need to contact me, uh, just type in the Matty B files into a search engine and you can contact me via Facebook or the multitudinal uh, array of contact messaging methods we have in the current year. Thank you very much. Appreciate you listening. Enjoy the music. Enjoy the interview and have a good one.
Hey, welcome to the Ogikubo Studio, where we have a music festival happening on Kyokai Dori outside. And uh, there might be some music in the background, but if that's uh, the listeners, if that's not your bag, then you're listening to the wrong podcast because this is a music <laughs> podcast about music, about uh, Tokyo subculture. So uh, don't be anti music. So we got, you guys are Gravy Train. That's right, yes. Gravy Train. Gravy Train. And you are on a Japanese tour. Yeah, three month tour in Japan. Wow. You're Australian? I'm from Australia. Okay. Yeah. Why do Australians take three months off for vacations? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you guys the only ones in the world that, that get this privilege? <laughs> well, it's weird. In my case, I actually、um, consider the whole music thing to be what I do in my life completely. And、um, so, wherever it takes me, really. And I had the opportunity to come here to Japan that,、uh, with the help from my fellow Cajon player, Kenji. Kenji.、Yeah. Who、uh, did a very good job at sorting out a tour. <laughs> <laughs> I, I helped gravy everything. <laughs> okay, that's good. Do you, did you go through April p e r i d o Yeah,、uh, we actually we had a friend, a,、uh, a musician in Melbourne, in Australia, because we went there for three months and, and did a bit of a tour around there. And he, well, he was planning on coming to Japan, and he did, and that was one of his connections. So,、um, We, we hit her up, and luckily enough, we actually got some live house shows from her because a, an American band dropped out. So we got、oh, about、yeah. four or five live house shows, which we did last month or within the last month, and they were, they were really good. That's good. Awesome. How, how,、uh, what kind of live houses were you at?、Uh, we played、uh, Live Freak in Shinjuku. Yeah.、Uh, Wild Side. Shinjuku. In Shinjuku. <laughs> A lot of Shinjuku. And Lotus. Lotus. Yotsuya. 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 Yeah. What, what were the shows like?、Uh, I have to say, I mean, all three of those, those were the main ones in our books. We had a handful more from, from、uh, Inter i d u r u But、uh, I'd have to say, Live Freak was probably the best. That was, that was a crazy night. Of plenty of bands. There were nine bands. Holy shit. And、yeah. uh, we, we had the lucky opportunity of、uh, playing last. Yeah. After all the great talent that Japan has to offer. <laughs> sound check from 2 p.m. 2 p.m. We, sound check. We played 10 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> It was a long day. That happens. Long day. Long that day. happens. That definitely happens. Okay. So before we get into all that, let's just introduce the band Gravy Train. Uh, what kind of music it is, and,、uh, and that. Yeah, so you're、mm. gravy.、Uh, I'm gravy. Okay, and you're from Melbourne? I'm from Darwin, which is Darwin, the, the tropics north. up north. Yeah, yeah way different. I, I don't、oh, I think、yeah. Melbourne. I don't know.、Um, okay, sure. So, what is gravy train? Well,、mm. this is always a hard thing. To, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hard thing should, to describe. You should We, describe、yeah. your solo. Uh, well,、history. I have a very, a very strange approach to the guitar where instead of just playing guitar, I tend to I slap it a lot as well, play harmonics and do percussion on the guitar. So, really, I'm playing the whole thing. So, lots of odd techniques. But the, the whole idea of that from the beginning really was to、uh, play it as a solo instrument, to play the bass, the drums, the lead, melody, all at the same time.、And、do you sing? Uh, no. No, no it's, all sing,、yeah. it's all acoustic. It's all instrumental. All from the guitar. Now make the guitar sing. This, this is a new kind of guitar style. Yeah. I, I saw it come out about maybe five or six years ago. You see it pop up here and there. Yeah, like yeah. it's usually some sort of social media. Yeah. Like it, some guy. It blows up, someone goes, wow, what the hell is yeah, this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. He's like in the shadows on a bench <laughs>、yeah. and he's like doing all these things. Um, I get a lot of people sending me those links.、Mm. Yeah, they're like, hey, check out this guy's guitar style. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's kind of cool. So, what, when did you get it? How did you get into this? Like, so, what, basically, what the style of guitar is, it's like sometimes you hear like, these people going, which is a kind of insulting way to describe it, actually. It's, but it's I, very I, hard to describe. I, I got a guitar behind you if you want to play it.、Oh. <laughs> I'm still, we're still pretty battered up from our show last night. Okay, sure. <laughs> But,、um, yeah, so it's that kind of guitar style. How did you get into it?、Um, probably, I mean, when I first saw it, because I saw it pop up a couple of times over the years I've been playing, and、uh, 
every time just just like you described a video of someone going mental on the guitar and just doing all these crazy things that I've never seen before and uh I actually saw one song by a German artist on YouTube that went viral and I was listening to it every day and I got to the point where I couldn't listen to it to, uh, anymore I had to play it and at the time I was a strictly an electric player I was into hard rock funk and blues and uh, for some reason I picked up the acoustic and tried to learn the song and it took me a good couple of weeks to get anything that sounded like it but after that just started really diving into it I was really interested in this whole style and then people started recognizing me just for that so I kind of stuck with it and also I lived in London for 13 years oh so you're not really mm. from Darwin then I originally from Darwin but I moved over to England when I was young and then I came back back to Australia about five years ago okay. so the reason why I stuck with this style was because when I came back to Australia I didn't have a band I had no one to play with and I kind of lived to perform and if I don't perform I pretty much go crazy so I use this style as my catalyst to just be able to play by myself without requiring anyone else. Okay. Um, and then yeah. and Kenji okay. came along. <laughs> it, but uh, Kenji, you're Japanese, right? Yes. And do you live in Japan? I live in Japan. I, I used to work in Tokyo for five years. Yeah. And I quit a job and I moved to Australia and was staying for three years. I travel and work and some. How did you two meet then? Uh, uh, so bar. Yeah, bar. near, near he, the end of your. Um, yeah, end of my visa. Mm. And he played by himself. And I asked him, Can I play with you? Uh, Sorry, I, I play percussion by myself. So <laughs> maybe I, I, doesn't need, I, I don't need uh, percussion. Yeah. yeah. I had a few people try it to uh, jam with me before and it never turned out well. It always seemed that the style was best without anything else. But You do um, have a, a video with a drummer, right? Mm, that would be Kenji. That would be, you're, the, you're playing on the drums on that yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, first I, I turned Kenji away and I said, no, I'm so low. But um, he got the chance to play yeah. and... And yeah, it was really, it was really good. good and we, we clicked really well. And just from there, there was, there was no sense in not keeping that. Well, sometimes with these kind of bling, bling, blacka, blacka guitar mm. players, <laughs> um, I feel like they're really grabbing for attention. Mm. Um, but what you seem to be, just my initial from watching your videos and the style of videos that you were making, but spiritual. Mm. It felt mm. spiritual. And then I was watching some of Kenji's drumming videos those are spiritual as yeah. well. Like, it's not like, um, hey, hey, look at me. It's, it feels more like a, an expression uh, deeper than wanting to just have people blindly pay attention to you. Yeah, that that's, what that's, I, that's what I got. Yeah. Oh, cool. Mm. So maybe that's why it's, you guys work. Yeah. I mean, uh, that would make a, a lot of sense to me, yeah. uh, to both of us, really. And uh, the way we, we go about things, it's all about the sound and and the uh, the emotion, the, pa the passion that we push out, just energy and vibration. Yeah. And uh, we had a lot of a lot of hard hard times trying to figure out what our genre was. And uh, but while while we've been in Japan, I think we came to the conclusion that we may as well call it spiritual rock. Spiritual rock. Spiritual oh, there rock. we go. Hey, <laughs> I was not too far off. Yeah. So yeah, pretty spot on. Yeah. Hammer on the head. Yeah. yeah. Well, when we describe spiritual rock, my people said, "Oh, Jesus." Rock. Yeah, yeah. Say, yeah. "Well, oh. Christian rock." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just say, just say, not necessarily. What religion are you? And if they say Christian, then you say, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Buy our CD. <laughs> yeah. Or, or, if, or if they say, oh, "I'm a Buddhist," actually, like, yeah. Well, we're I'll not really that, Christian no. either. We're more Buddhist. And yeah. then you can say, "Yeah, we 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 look to the Buddha." That, that's what I meant. That's what I meant. <laughs> yeah. Spiritual? No, not Jesus. No. <laughs> but if they say Christian, then yes, of course, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, you can increase your sales. Yeah. But flexible. Yeah. Thanks for the tip. Flexible. I better write it down. Yeah. <laughs> Of course we're spiritual. Yeah. You're kind of spiritual. Whatever <laughs> spiritual you are, 
so are we. You can buy my CD. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it rhymes as well. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's with this new style of music, and that's what it is. Um, a lot of people still kind of play like, oh, we, we're playing like Skinner or uh, we're playing like Nirvana or we're playing mm-hmm. like this genre. A lot of people um, for grunge, for example, I know some guys that really get into grunge and their songs sound grunge. But before grunge, songs didn't sound like grunge. Mm-hmm. So grunge was a name. But how can we, would you Would you say, I think we need a, a title for this style yeah. of. Yeah, that's a, that's like a very, per, very good point. Per, percussive folk? Uh, percussive, but that's just in, adding to a yeah, folk. You yeah, know? it's in a very, a very strange place, this style, because it doesn't have a name. And but people have lots of variations of them. They might call it, yeah, percussion guitar or percussion finger style or like a like an addition onto another genre, like yeah. you say, like percussion. But rock or... doesn't is not like a technical description of the music. Yeah. Grunge is not like a technical description. So... I like the idea of rock because rock has always been taken more as an expression rather uh, than sound. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I don't know where this is going, <laughs> yeah. but my pedal's to the metal. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go as far as I can. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so i kind of stuck with um describing what i personally do it's just a slap guitar it seemed easy enough to slap mm, guitar just, yeah it rolls off the tongue yeah the tongue. So. what do you do yeah slap guitar slap guitar and people can kind of get it what pretty the hell slap guitar because yeah. <laughs> there's slap bass yeah which is yeah, like yeah. Fun. oh you play bass line on the guitar interesting smash Smash guitar, because yeah, I do that too, <laughs> by, by accident, of course. Mm, yeah. yeah, we get pretty, uh, pretty expressive when we play. Sure, your videos are very different from your live performance. Yeah, because I saw yes. some clips from your live performance, and it looked like I don't know, like monkeys from <laughs> two thousand one <laughs> beating up on. Them. Like it, it was not. And then I see like your your more your YouTube videos. And it's like Kenji's sitting on a stone in a pond yeah. <laughs> playing like this really quiet. And then I see the live music and I was like, is this the same band? Yeah. yeah. Which is fine. Yeah. No, we live off live performances, really. That's 90% of what we do. I think that's what we live for. Mm. But, um, you know, you gotta you got to have something to show otherwise as well. Mm-hmm. Not everyone can be there to see you smash it out live. So we can say that Gravy Train is a... Do you guys always play together? Because you're... Do you live in... You don't live in Japan, though. No. I'm just here for the tour. But we... Our group is just us two. And that's pretty much the way it's going to stay. But there are times in between. So after our tour in Melbourne, we we had about a five-month hiatus where Kenji was back in Japan and I was in in Australia and I think we've done that twice as well we're long periods of time without playing together before we can get back together and just jump straight back into it and this is what we do we just go bang go bang mm. do you still play separately then uh, I still very very regularly I'm always playing like I'll go back doing my solo thing with the um with the goal of getting back together so we can team up and and hit 120 percent okay what do you do when you're not playing with um gravy train kenji uh, what do you like when you're not playing together what are uh, you doing tra- uh, i'm i'm playing happy drum uh that is yeah we were talking about this yeah. when we we're getting set up happy yeah. drum sounds like uh, ureshi drum uh, like a <laughs> happy happy <laughs> hey, actually yeah. the happy H A P I yeah. hand activated percussion instrumental is the correct name. Okay, and that one's made in USA. Is that the one that plays the notes? Ah yes, uh, D three to D four, no sharp. Okay. Have you seen those um those hand pan drums? They got pretty famous in the last couple of years. Yeah, well, it's I, I, like that, but it, that it it has its own sound. Like instantly, it put you in like meditative state. It's like very you just go, oh. <laughs> it's, it's really cool. Yeah. And do you play around town? Do you play in Tokyo I, or I play in mountain. Oh in the or, mountain. Uh, near the sea, ocean. Or the yoga studio. I ah. sometimes I support the yoga studio. That makes sense. To, yeah. to play. 
meditation thing. Do you know of a live house in to- in Tokyo in, in Sasazuka called Cheshme? Cheshme? I don't know. It's like a, a, they do a lot of that style of music there. Oh, I see. And they have all of these old kind of lamps on tatami mat oh. floor and they do a lot of uh, um, frame drumming and they have, oh. I, it might be your scene actually. Oh, sounds yeah, interesting. Yeah, and it's like mm. international folky kind of alternative uh, culture style of yeah. cafe. I play there sometimes. Oh, I see. It's good. Oh, I right. recommend it. Yeah. Cheshme. Yeah. Sasazuka. I should. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So what's, it, you, do you live in Darwin then? Um, that's my base, I guess. I'm always moving from place to place, but that's where I always come back to. Okay. Even even when I went to England, it was 13 years, but I came back to Darwin. <laughs> what, what's Darwin like? That's a really famous place. It's weird. It is probably the most known place out of Australia, but when people go to Australia from overseas, they don't go, they don't go to Darwin a lot. It's um, does everything there try to kill you? Um, well, you know, if if you if your head's not on your shoulders and you make some stupid choices, then things will kill you. Yeah. Like, like what? if you go fishing and decide to go swimming in the water, which is infested by crocodiles, then mm-hmm. you're probably going to die. <laughs> probably. <laughs> if you go walking at night in the park with, in long grass, then the snake's probably going to bite you. Yeah. And uh, just stay away from the big ass spiders on the tree. <laughs> it's Apart scary. That, you're right. It's fucking scary. It's, it's but it's no different from having you know uh, cities infested with cars that'll hit you if you cross at the wrong time. That's true. That's it's, true. A, it's a very very similar. Crocodiles aspect. are different. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Saltwater crocodiles. <laughs> but Darwin's actually the, uh, to my knowledge, the the place with the biggest population of crocodiles in the world. Holy shit. So it's very interesting. But you, if you've ever seen, well, I'm sure loads of people, you know, you've seen Crocodile Dundee, you know, that is Darwin. You watch that movie, any of those movies, it's Darwin. Yeah. That is literally the description, you know, kangaroos and koalas and all this and that, all the nature, all the death. <laughs> Can I ask you, what do you think about kangaroos? Kangaroos? Well, um, yeah. The ruse. Yeah. It's they're, quite the ruse. Big and muscly, really. <laughs> Hey, do you eat them? Uh, you can eat them, but I'll be honest, I, I don't like the taste. It's yeah. a very rare meat. Mm. It doesn't taste very good to me. You can eat crocodile too. They also kind of taste like stinky chicken. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What about, do you eat koala bears? Uh, no. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's because of how vicious they are. Are they vicious? Yeah, this is this is a big, big misconception. People think koala bears are big, nice, cute, and cuddly. They look really but, nice, hey, cute, Have you seen cuddly. their claws? Their no. claws are bigger than your arms. <laughs> what? Oh, your fingers, they they got massive claws. And, yeah, you try to take them off their gum tree or something, they'll, they'll rip into you. <laughs> do people do that? Um, I'm sure it's happened many times. But, yeah, they're not they're not cute and cuddly. <laughs> okay. They might be cute, but don't cuddle them. <laughs> I got a map of Australia here, mm. and I was thinking of just zooming in on some certain areas and maybe asking about those areas. Oh, okay. Now, we were beginning, and ask about the music scene as well. Mm. So, when, when you think The music scene's got a lot of variety, yeah. Like, for example, what is there a music scene in Darwin? Darwin has, a, mm. yeah, a very interesting music scene. It's more like a community, or more like three communities in the different areas of the small space of Darwin it's very uh, very confined in a way it's like everybody knows each other it's it's interesting does everybody know everybody in Darwin is it one of those definitely uh, you know maybe 10 20 years ago it, it was like that now it's getting a bit more populated and getting high rises more city stuff what's the population bit. of Darwin uh, I can't tell you for sure but it's not very big 50,000 uh, I wouldn't know but um, mm. probably something like that, I yeah. Know. Okay. But yeah, I mean, uh, it's a very intimate music scene. It's like uh, everybody likes to enjoy the music, you know. Everybody supports each other. People want to come out, and actually, because it's a tropical place, there's two seasons. So you have a dry season and a wet season. Right. Six months of uh, no rain and. Uh, pretty hot depending where you're from and then six months of rain and very hot no matter where you're from <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm canadian 
and so everywhere is hot. It's always hot. It's always hot. Yeah, <laughs> I left. Uh, I Today's left. weather is perfect. It's right December. Now, it's like yeah. eleven degrees. I'm freezing my bunions. Oh off. <laughs> no, this is perfect. I look. I'm, I'm a happy clam. I'm a happy clam. <laughs> I left Darwin, and it's the wet season right now. I left at 35 degrees. Holy shit. Mm. Yeah, that's like mm. Tokyo summers. I yeah, and that's when, during the wet season, it's all locals, pretty much. And the dry season is when, uh, well, the tourists come in. You said see. there was three three music scenes. Uh, it's like one Three community. Yeah, like, like three different communities. Like, you'll, you'll have, like, a space where everybody, all the musicians know each other in this area, and then there'll be another general area where it's another group like a community of people that all stick together and a little bit separated okay um and what type of music is popular oh got a bit of variety but probably um it's definitely got folk mm. it's country i like the country i like country music too yeah. i'm a big acoustic guy yeah yeah you like that one then I'd that probably was, that like was pretty it. nice. Yeah, yeah, it's a very friendly music scene. Okay. Yeah, even though it's got a pretty thriving open mic scene around there as well. Interesting. Yeah, there's generally four or five days of the week that you can go and play at an open mic. Can you get in pretty easily? Do you have very to go easy. early? You have to go in at two p.m. for a. 10 oh no! <laughs> oh, there's no, there's no uh, pre-signing up or anything. You just you waltz up there, pretty much first come first serve. And everybody just has a good time. And some good musicians in Darwin, too. What about the musicians in Japan? Um, it's about what I was expecting. Uh, because uh, when I was in London, uh, it was a very high bar. And coming to Tokyo, I was pretty sure that the bar would be equally, most likely higher. And yeah, the musicians here, pretty damn good. I've seen some amazing guitar players, some amazing drummers, a couple of really good singers. Yeah, it's 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 good. It definitely good. The bar is set really nice here <laughs> <laughs> in Tokyo. Yeah, it's crazy. Where mm. I, where I'm from, it's you just kind of pick up. You're not supposed to be good. Like you're <laughs> you're supposed to be okay, and then that's good mm. enough. Okay, someone will pat you on the back. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, good job. Well, I like yeah. that song. It was really emotional. Mm, yeah, but in Tokyo, it's like we have no emotions. <laughs> we only have technical ability. <laughs> Let's get as much of that as we can. Oh yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah. There's a little bit of a lack of, uh, or not a lack of, but there's a a big emphasis on the technical side. Yeah. yeah. I would say there's a lack of creativity. Maybe. I yeah. Would, mm. I, it goes back to that idea that I was talking about before. People play blues, then they just play the blues perfectly, but it's not like I couldn't go and get a BB King record and mm. hear the same style of blues. So the, I think there is a lack of creativity, mm. but there's a focus on perfection, which is very interesting. Yeah. Oh, that perfection is crazy here. I say some of these guitar players I've seen shredding solos, and I can't spot one note out of place. I not know. one dead note. And I, I thrive myself on being at a point where you practice so much that yeah, you, you're happy with your own playing. But I mean, I've never been at a point where I can just play through something so technical and not get at least something a little bit off. Yeah. That's that's crazy. And then when you're done, you just kind of bow and sit down. Yeah. And have yeah. A smoke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got that. Like there's no, there's no like. Yeah, yeah. I fucking did it. It's like uh, back to humble. This, I am done. Humble now. Yes. It's time for a <laughs> uh, Kenji, yeah. question: Why don't Japanese people play Japanese music? <laughs> because mm. ah. <laughs> we like even this festival outside today yeah. we were watching um, japanese people dressed up as country musicians playing christmas songs yes like that's really not japanese ah, so and this is you, do you know what i mean yeah I, I yeah understand. so what's up what's up with that mm, i mean the f the following music is better and cool <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think they they love the Western music. Yeah, right? because like, but this Japanese people like you'll often find housewives taking ikebana courses, flower mm -hmm. arrangement courses, yeah. or kimono class. Yeah. So there's like all of these um, old men like to do their kanji practice ah, with the fude. And yeah. They, they they write it out on New Year's, mm -hmm. but 
then they pick up an electric guitar and play the blues. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Sweet. very like because I wonder like I often go my initial reaction is wow these guys are really good, but I never see them play Japanese music. Ah uh, yeah yeah like how black people don't go looking for Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> that's a Joe Rogan joke. That's not mine. <laughs> Well, so do you, like it's just better, and that's the only reason. I, uh, other reason, mm, I think the uh, Japanese song is like uh, very stereotype and a bit child childish, childish. Okay. And if the people play better, they're getting better, maybe wanna play. The Western music, it's more difficult and technical, and so yeah. Okay, <laughs> so more variety. More know. variety. I kind of had the idea that um, music in Japan was always used as a as a, a backup, mm -hmm. like the temple. They would just play music in the background as the chanting occurs. Yeah, yeah. And for like the geisha culture, the geisha would play songs as backup to the party. Uh, yes. Or, or with sumo, they would play music as backup to the sumo. So ah, I see, I see. music has never really been, like in Japanese culture, in my opinion, has never been uh -huh. like the reason to do something. It's been uh, yeah. as a support for the reason to yeah. do something. That's just my interpretation. Ah, I see. Mm. Yeah. Like a ritual yeah. thing, festival or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But Western music has, like we have the symphony halls. Ah, I see. We have the rock halls, the stadiums and things ah. like that, where people go to see the actual music mm. and everything else is like... It's pretty lucky for us. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really fascinating. Did you know that most Chinese people don't know who the Beatles are? Because huh? they're for the <laughs> Cultural Revolution. <laughs> oh. Western, Western culture was completely barred from China oh, wow. uh, during the Beatles' popularity. So I've even asked Chinese people about this in like westernized Chinese people and Chinese Chinese people. The uh -huh. westernized Chinese people go, "Yeah, we don't we don't know who those fuckers are Whoa. back in China." Uh -huh. And like I'll, there'll be Beatles music playing at a Chinese restaurant and I'll ask the Chinese server, "Do you know this music?" And it's like "Let it be." And they go, "No, I have no Holy idea shit. what Let it be is." Isn't that crazy? <laughs> That's nuts. I'm kind of happy to hear that. <laughs> it's impressive. Yeah. It takes a lot of work to get the beat to like prevent the Beatles. Yeah, we will not conform. <laughs> yeah. No Beatles in China. All right. So, what about the Gold Coast music scene? Ah, Gold Brisbane. Coast. Okay. Mm. Back to oh. Australia. See, I I haven't really got much uh, personal experience around the East Coast. Oh really? So places like Gold Coast and that. What from what I've heard, and I've heard a lot, is that there's some good festivals. It's a good, a nice place to go with a lot of good music. Good for busking too. But um, I think it's a very free kind of place to play. But probably a lot more. Uh, I guess you'd say modern. Like a, a lot more mainstream. Mm. To appease to the tourists, yeah, is it a lot like yeah, touristy yeah. mainstream? It's like a heavy, a heavy tourist attraction there, yeah. the Gold Coast, and so that's where you the go. Other places to around there, let it be. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's where, where you go and let it be. <laughs> that's where you let it be. Um, okay, that makes sense. I used to work in the tourism section of town of Victoria, British Columbia. Mm, yeah, and yeah. so you'd get a lot of you'd get a lot of music, but it's directed towards people who are all coming in off cruise ships for a night, and they live very normal lives like you know they watch television and things like that <laughs> the, the tv culture subculture is the real culture by the oh, way yes. Yeah. yes mainstream culture is just um uh, reflected advertisements mm. you know it's like oh I'm, i want to be like the advertisement i agree with that <laughs> what about places like sydney do you did mm. you ever go down there to play music so when we went for our, our three-month tour to melbourne our original plan was that we were going to split it between Sydney and Melbourne. Okay, Melbourne's being in the far south, yeah, north of. They're not too far Tasmania. away from each other, but uh, we got a lot of tips that really Sydney, Sydney has a music scene, but when you compare it to Melbourne, there's just something about Melbourne that kind of puts it on top of everywhere else. Really? Because, yeah, Melbourne has diversity. You can hear everything in Melbourne. Mm. Do you know but, why? Um. 
it's a very kind of it's interesting place. It's pretty multicultural. It reminded me of London a lot. There's you got people from all over the place. Even you have areas that would be dominated by different cultures. But the music scene, you could hear pretty much everything. Like African music. Yeah, yeah everything. Okay, that sounds interesting. My, from my knowledge, I think I think yeah. Sydney is uh, a good place. Probably more to see bands. I think you see more bands. I didn't really see many bands around Melbourne. Okay. Like uh, for example, when we first went to Melbourne, Kenji was playing the drum kit, and he he plays cajon now. Yeah. But um, he only switched to that because when we got to Melbourne, there were no drum kits. Everywhere we played, there was never a drum kit. So wow. we had to adapt. So he started playing cajon, and it was a good thing because the cajon is uh, really interesting. Yeah, uh, as yeah. a fellow cajon player. <laughs> Especially the way he yeah, bashes the shit yeah. out of it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> well, the cajon can take a beating. Oh, well, yeah, he's beaten a couple. Good. Um, <laughs> he's, and... He smashed his first one, put holes into that, yeah. and now his second one is uh, built, for it, <laughs> built for it to not break. I think it's made of carbon fiber. Really? Yeah, and um, I think it was the first couple of weeks here in Tokyo. Yeah, yeah he got a hold. nice, lovely crack in it. The, the nice carbon fiber hole. one? Yeah. Uh, Daijobu, is it okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, 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 it should be asking, yeah, are, you, are you okay? <laughs> are you okay? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm just concerned about your kahon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, is your kahon okay? <laughs> Next kahon might be... Next, maybe steel. Steel, uh, ceramic. Yeah. Diamond. Diamond, <laughs> yeah. We were speaking about this earlier today. We are like, well, shit, you know, I keep putting holes in my guitar. He keeps cracking kahons. I better move up. I better go to carbon fiber guitars. And he, what's he going to move up to? Oh, it's got to be steel oh, or diamond. Eh? Eventually, we'll get to yeah, diamond. Yeah, <laughs> diamond threaded. If anyone wants to support us financially for getting diamond calm, that would be much appreciated. Yeah. What's your website? <laughs> uh, www.giveusadiamond.com. Um, <laughs> Good website for that. Yeah. <laughs> that was I blogged the uh, stand, symbol mm. stand. Yeah. So. If you've seen the live videos, you'll see that Kenji isn't just restricted to the Kahan. No. He plays, uh, he was playing with a hand splash cymbal. And now he's actually, um, so we, we we played a show in Shibuya, a very, very crazy show, where Kenji managed to snap his cymbal stand. Now this is a metal, a metal wow. cymbal stand, and he snapped it in half. And, and he was bleeding everywhere as well. Good. Halfway through his song, blood all over the wow. place. Wow. And um, he's gone through a few of those hand splashes. They just start getting bent way out of shape. So now he's moved up to just a standard, a, a standard Similar. splash for a drum kit, which is obviously a lot, a lot thicker. Yeah. And uh, but he's got the strength yeah. for it now. You play. You also do. You have a rope or something that you play against uh, your splash cymbal. Rope. The like, chain. A chain. The, chain, uh, chain like the, a... the bath plug. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, yeah, a chain from a bath plug. Where did you get that idea? Okay, so for people who are listening, yeah. the splash symbol is a is a small symbol, and it kind of makes a splash sound. That's why it's called a splash symbol. And a lot of yeah. cajon players use it so that they have something else besides a bass and a drum. Um, Kenji has this chain apparently that he brushes against the slide, the, the splash symbol to make a very unique effect. So what's, why did you, what's up with that idea? Did you uh, see it somewhere? Is it your original idea? It's my very original. original idea. Good. I, I was supposed to think, uh, just put the ladder symbol, uh, the, the chain, Yeah. but um, it, it doesn't work. So, um, Oh, I got it. <laughs> oh, against the splash. Yeah. Huh. It's just out of nowhere. It's like one of the greatest inventions he's ever made. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's pretty cool, though. Yeah, and it doesn't sound like a chain when you... Because yeah. a chain so it sounds like... Chang, 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 yeah, but yeah. it has a very... Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Almost like chimes, but not annoying. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> chimes. chimes. Yeah. yeah. When I see a drummer bring up the chimes, I'm like, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm not sticking around to hear yeah. your chimes. <laughs> chimes are the worst. Yeah. I'd rather see a triangle. That would be oh. fun. <laughs> but chimes, I don't know. Oh, man. I hate chimes. I don't know. I'm sorry if you play chimes. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Not yet. <laughs> um, and then and and the and he also uh, uses a a foot 
tumbling. Uh, foot tambourine. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got one of those. Mm. Yeah, somewhere. To great effect. Mm. That's a really nice addition. Actually. Yeah. I also have a bell one. A bell. One. Bell. Oh, oh that's nice. Oh. It, it, some people say it sounds a too Christmassy. Ah. Uh, but I think it hey, sounds t- more like. It is the season to be jolly. I think it can also sound like Eastern European, like gypsy music, like because gypsy music have these uh, bells yeah. as well. So. Yeah, I was gonna. I was trying to get into um. Genre. What was that genre? Which one? Um, Mm. Mm. Oh, oh. that would slip my mind. <laughs> what type of music? Uh, from? Uh, Celtic. Celtic music. Yeah, Celtic music. That sounds like it would be interesting. For That'd Celtic. be good. Yeah, yeah, I got this affinity with uh, Celtic music. I'm, I really love it. Really? There's a lot of old traditional music I've always been into. I from like a, from Celtic a young age. music. Some of it gets really annoying, though. I, I know what you mean. There is a lot of hit or miss stuff. I yeah. kind of find it the same with jazz. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, there's some really moving pieces made by people. I don't know many other people. Probably have no idea who they are. But amazing pieces of music, nonetheless. Some of it just get like people play Celtic music to feel like this fake gankiness. Oh, like, this is Celtic. Uh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> like every song they play sounds like that. Yeah. I saw. Do you know Ashley McIsaac? He's a Canadian mm. uh, fiddler. Right. And he's from the east coast of Canada, which has a you know deep history with uh, Scotland and Ireland and places like that. Cool. Mm. And uh, I saw him play once, and he was playing like with a pianist and, uh, and, a, and a violin, and they were doing a lot of like classical style Celtic music. That was dope. That nice. was dope. Yeah. Mm. But there's that that other version. Yeah, I think the the majority of people that actually play Celtic music live. It can get a bit gruesome and repetitive. Yeah. There's actually there's a there's a there's a guy in in uh, Darwin who plays Celtic music, and he's from uh, he's from Ireland. Uh, he plays some really nice stuff actually. Sounds good. He's a guitarist and a singer, and he plays some harmonica too. Mm. Uh, in Tasmania, a lot of Celtic music. Mm. Really. Tasmania. Yeah. So the the music scene in Tasmania is Celtic. Celtic. Fuck. I think a lot of the Celtic people a bit, uh, long, long time ago moved to the Tasmania. Mm-hmm. So that's why a lot of Celtic music are there. Interesting. Well, that's the Tasmanian music scene covered. Mm. What about what about <laughs> what about Perth? Last one oh, before we Perth. move on. Okay, yeah. So Perth is all the way, uh, kind of all the way west. In the middle of nowhere. It's like the most it's isolated the, city the most in isolated the world. Place. Yeah, so yeah. you got you got dirt and desert, and then you got Perth, and that's it. That's the west. That's the west coast. Um, and uh, from what I've heard, so Kenji's actually been to Perth. He's been to most of these places on his uh, when yeah. he was going around Australia. Cool. I, I went everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's Perth like? Perth like. Uh, kind of like Darwin, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, a little bigger than Darwin. Yeah, it's but... bigger than Darwin. Probably, a, I don't know. Well, I can't say anything about the culture. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was staying just for a week or something. So, mm. but yeah. I think the music s- scene would be in, s- similar, similar, Darwin. To Darwin. similar to yeah. Darwin. See, the thing about Darwin, because it has such an influx of uh, tourism six months of the year, it brings in a lot of interesting things music and festivals. I think Perth would be very similar to Darwin during the wet season, maybe. Mm. I don't think they don't get that much tourist attraction. But it's Have you been nice to place. Perth? I actually haven't been. You haven't Perth, been. No. It's too far away. I have some friends that came from Perth and went to Darwin. Um, and from the way they describe it, it seems pretty similar, yeah, into their country music. Good. That's interesting. Mm. Yeah. All right. And a, lo- a lot of dirt. A lot, a, lot of of dirt, <laughs> a lot of desert. A lot of desert. Yeah, it's Canada and Australia. Like um, Canada is really cold, and Australia is very hot. But very similar histories to each other, mm-hmm. and how there's like coasts with nothing in between. Yeah, like not yeah. nothing. Sorry to all the people, to the seven people, <laughs> <laughs> to the half dozen of people who live between those coasts. But it's very true like it's 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 easier to travel to other countries than to travel inside of your own country mm. frequently like in Canada and I, I would assume the same is true in Australia yeah. 
Well, right. like the time it took to fly from Melbourne to to Darwin was just about over half the flight time to Japan. So yeah, it's not not so easy to get around. Yeah, mm. it's like you could go to a totally different world, or you could go in that same time to the same world. Yeah, because yeah, the, you want to go somewhere that this is part of a place you already live in, or like a completely different, yeah, place, right. different, completely different culture, different language. That's food. a good thing about Australia too, because it's surrounded by oh, Asia. Yeah. So it's like you've got so much variety that isn't Australia all around you. Interesting. Why would you just want to go to another place in Australia? Yeah, yeah. I see something interesting. Get threatened by bogans. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, okay, so let's talk about the tour. So you came, you, how long have you been in Japan for? So we just about hit the two month mark on our three month tour. Okay. And yeah. do you, do you, do you, I guess you came up to hang out with Kenji and yeah. play music in Japan with him. Mm -hmm. um, what's it been like? What do you think? Uh, it's been a ride for sure. And it's been a pretty good ride. Like we've played roughly, I'd say 70 shows. Holy 70 shit. 70 shows. Seven zero. In two months. Yeah. Sometimes two a day? Yeah. Like I say, there's, I think maybe three days, three or four days that would be including today that we haven't had somewhere to play. What are your thoughts of the music scene after two months? Because you must have been like, mm. at first it's like this, but maybe not. And then you go to these different places around and you see these different. It's, it's really, yeah, it's, it has got variety. I see. You can see the massive, in, like a Western influence with the music. Yeah, the music. Like a lot of people like covering Western music, mm. and uh, even like I love ramen. I'll, I'll eat ramen every day if I can. It's my new favorite food since I've been in Tokyo. Oh really? Yeah. The the food here is so awesome. Oh yeah. But every time I go to a ramen shop, I can hear this horrible music playing. It's, uh, Horrible mainstream Western music. Oh. Like the really bad R&B stuff. And I have no idea why it's playing in the ramen shop. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> but speaking of live, there's yeah, some really, really talented players and some amazing piano players too. I've seen some really good stuff so far. Okay. And what was the crazy show you played recently? All right. So we played a... a last night? Last night, yeah. You must have been thinking about it throughout the day. Mm. A little bit here and there. A little bit here Flashbacks. and there. Flashbacks. Well, considering <laughs> so crazy something night. happened last night. It was a crazy night. We played at a live house. Um, what ended up happening was, so after breaking a string and after putting a new crack in my guitar, my guitar actually stopped working, completely just died, cut out and wouldn't work anymore. And so actually my guitar broke. Do you play mic'd in or do you... I, yeah, I play plugged in. Okay. Like if, if anyone sees us play live, you, you'll see that we are all over the place. Well, I'm definitely, I'm everywhere. Like if you put a mic in front of me, there's not a good idea. Okay. I would, however much stage we have, I'm going to use it the whole time. So, yeah, the guitar broke and that ended our set. Uh, luckily enough today, um, we did manage to get it working again because we have a show tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that and so on. So it was pretty worried that might Were you just going the too end of, crazy on the guitar? Um, something like that, I think, yeah. Like we hit about 120% <laughs> last night. And so. then how, <laughs> how far into the set were you when you broke the guitar? Well, past halfway. Past halfway. Past halfway. Did so, you finish the set? Um, we, mm. we lived we, not really, That's we played bad. one more song and tried to use a microphone, but it wasn't, Quite. we didn't enjoy it. The crowd enjoyed it yeah, because we put the effort in, but yeah, it's, it's not the same. Yeah. Being stunted in one place is not my idea of expression. Mm. And you got to finish the set. Yeah. Like you, well, go, you got to you... keep going no matter what, right? Yeah. Or like you, you, you practice so hard. Not you specifically, but in general, you know, mm. if you're if you're getting a set, and you have the forty minutes or forty five minutes in your head, and you practice, and you can't do it, it feels like somebody just took it away at the last moment. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You're prepared to go to through hell and high water to get yeah. through your set, and then something, some technical difficulty comes along and stunts you. 
That pisses me off. Yeah, yeah I think it pisses, <laughs> that pisses everyone off. <laughs> that, ha- that happened to me a couple of years ago. I was just, I was like, okay, I got a show. Uh, I'll put some new strings on my guitar. And then like a string broke and broke my headstock as oh, well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I went out and played one. anyways, but it was that's like, whatever. Wow. Fuck that. Mm. Yeah. That's so dumb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, whatever. So yeah, luckily anyway, for anyone listening that is coming to any of our shows, we did get the guitar fixed. It has been resurrected from the dead. And is ready to crack on yeah, for at least the next show, unless I break it again, mm. which is very, very possible. How? What do you think about? So, you, sorry, you've been playing. You said a few live houses thanks to Inter uh, Idol, Inter Idol, mm. um, <laughs> and you said that you were playing some live houses. So, if you're not playing live houses, where are you playing? All right. So, through opportunities, we've made quite a few decent connections since we've been here. Our first um, plan when we got here was uh, we hit the open mic scene Mm -hmm. to try and make some connections. And generally, every open mic that we went to, we made friends, we made connections, or even the owner would ask us back to play some shows. So it's been between... And which open mics did you find useful? In case anyone's listening. Okay, all over Tokyo. Tokyo, I might throw this over to Kenji because there's there's Mm. a big handful of them. Oh, yeah. Kenji's the mastermind. (laughs) He's the master. (laughs) Kenji-san. Shinjuku, Okubo, Higashinaka, no Shibuya. Do you know the names of the places? Uh, Yes. Uh, All of them. Uh, just a, like if you could recommend <laughs> like a few, that, like if, if a musician one. is coming to town, they're going to some open mics, they might oh, want to get right. some shows, where would you recommend uh, as a public service? Shinjuku Smoking Boogie is pretty good. Shinjuku mm. Smoking Boogie. Yeah. yeah. That's a nice one. It's like, not live house, but it's the sound is very... Almost. Almost. Is. Almost yeah, live the house. The sound so. is nice and loud. And okay. Loud. You can smoke all over the place. It's a proper rock and roll place. Oh. Yeah. And yeah, Ruby Room. Uh, Ruby Room. Yeah, so Ruby yeah. Room is in uh, Shibuya. Shibuya. Yeah, and this is the most Western uh, place, the most Western open mic. It's I've pretty. Been. It's yeah. it's, it's, it's the place where I can go and talk on the mic because everybody's Western. <laughs> sometimes I, I've I've played there before. I haven't played there recently, but mm. sometimes when I'm waiting for my set, I go to the convenience store and I grab a beer. Yeah, and then I, uh, <laughs> I there's this alcove. I like to hide in the shadows of this alcove, and you can see through an alleyway. To the to the doors of a love hotel, <laughs> and you can watch yeah. you can watch people oh, awesome. coming in and going yeah, into yeah, the yeah. love hotel, <laughs> and you just sipping this beer. Oh, look at those two! <laughs> they're, they're going to fuck. <laughs> and then, oh, look at those two! They just fucked. <laughs> Time for my show. <laughs> That's so Ruby cool. Room's a good one, yeah, yeah for yeah, Western yeah. one, and watching people going into <laughs> yeah. love hotels. I'll keep that in mind tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> are you good? Are you back yeah, at the Ruby tomorrow? Yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Do you know who you're playing with? <laughs> yeah, we're, so uh, we've been given a special a special guest appearance at the start of the show from seven o'clock. We're playing fifty minutes. Okay. Good. Now the um, the big header of the show is uh, Jerry. Jelly. Oh, the guitarist. Yeah, Jerry. Mera. Mera. Jerry, Jerry Mera. Mera. Yeah, he's yeah, a good Mera. guy. He's yeah. awesome. And he's a good guitar player. He is a yeah. very good guitar he's, player. He's, stand- he's stellar, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's great. Mm. So he's uh, the highlight of the night. So we got Smoke and Boogie. We got Ruby Room. Ruby. One more. One more. Ah, Ogi Kubo, Doctor's Bar. Uh, Which Doctor's Bar? Ogi Doctor's Kubo. Bar. Doctor's Bar. Here. Uh, Club Doctor is the... Oh, the basement so, is Crab Doctor, and and then upstairs the, they have upstairs an open mic, open mic and the um, Doctor's Bar, big acoustic style, but also a pretty rock and roll place. I've never, I've never heard of it. Yeah, that's really. great. We actually um, Doctor's Bar in Ogikubo. Yeah, Ogikubo. I can just go yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should, should go there. Fuck Definitely you know. check it out. It's nice. You've got good recommendations. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And we've probably got about twenty more. <laughs> yeah, I think that's okay yeah. though. Um, but this uh, this place is where we. Once we really started to get on our, on our feet and we were getting opportunities, we actually um, we got offered a uh, end of year party show where we're going to play for four hundred people. Yeah. Holy so shit! So you really can, you know, Ginza. the opportunities there. Ginza, a Oppo- doctor's bar. You know, opportunities there. Uh, my philosophy always has been just to go and play as much as you can, go perform every day if possible. Wow! And things will come. Yeah, sometimes I get a bit gloomy. 
about mm. like going out there and hitting the streets because I yeah, guess like course. it's a lot of it's all that effort. it's really hard and mm. sometimes you're just like yeah I just watch people smoke now I smoke. Yeah, yeah so there's a there there are reasons to say no but like like your attitude of just saying yeah we hit his seventy shows a few of them probably weren't the best but you know the, that the first you, couple of weeks were it, it went completely uphill. You know, the first couple of weeks were uh, had me a bit worried. Like, why? What was that? What just, was the just issue? because of the well, the places we we're going to. You know, it's such small amounts of people. Yeah. Or well, maybe just the first week, actually. By the second week, it just started picking up. So people you know, are coming so out to the shows, and yeah, well, meeting the right people and finding the right places. But um, yeah, it 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 just got better and better and better, and now mm. we're two months into it, and it's continuing to get better and better and better. That's interesting. That's really good. Yeah, I'm I've always been good at finding like really talented people to play with, but I've always been really bad at like trying to promote myself, you know, because mm. it, it's it's like promoting your soul, and like I can I can go and do a job I don't care about, and like find myself getting really good at it because I just like yeah. I don't I don't feel like I'm selling out, but. Promoting myself has always been an issue, I think. Yeah. It's a difficult part. Yeah. But I think once you're over it, you're over it. Mm. Yeah. Like, just just go and just, yeah. just smash it out. That's, yeah. that's what I say. It's like applying for a job every day of the week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it. New place. Oh, that's a great thing about Tokyo so far. It's pretty much always a new place. I love that. I love that when we can go somewhere new that everybody there, no one's seen us before. Nobody knows mm. who we are. I love that. I, guess I get it, bored. I get sick of going to the same places over and over again. Uh, so interesting. Now, I, of course, I feel appreciated that these places would like to have me back wherever they are, Australia, any other country. But I'm always looking to spread. You know, you always want to spread your music, spread your message to new people all the time. Yeah. Um, I guess because your style is very original, do you find yourself... Be, like being called for coming like to play again or go somewhere else because your style's original like Probably, do you think that has a factor in I it like oh that, i haven't heard that before yeah but like if if somebody wants a blues musician there's such a large amount mm, of blues musicians mm, to choose yeah, from whereas you know the gravy train yeah there's only one gravy train only one gravy well, i'm train. sure there's plenty of them but there's only one that that does what we do yeah but yeah i agree with that um, due to our uniqueness, actually, uh, Tokyo has been very, very accepting of what we do, and they seem to really enjoy it. So that's definitely helped us a lot. Hmm. Due to what we do is pretty different. And I guess because you're a technical player as well, so like if, to, to I, a certain degree, it depends how many beers I've had. <laughs> <laughs> but it, at the same time, it's a technical style that's not so common. So other mm. technical players will go, oh, what's that? Yeah. How long did it take for you? This is, sorry, this is, regarding using, uh, mastering the guitar as a percussion instrument, because I play mm. guitar and I play percussion. And I don't do both at the same time. Yeah. Uh, but I have, it, you know, you can tap on the guitar and make some really interesting noises. But doing both. But doing both at the same time in time. Like, how long did it take for you to yeah. to get to a point where you felt like, I have this down enough. I probably, literally, I'd say probably up until a year ago. And when did you start? Four years ago. So it took a long time. So it took, um, to get time. really comfortable with it. It, it. And even only recently have I gotten to the point where I can go and play a show and uh, be up to scratch as a performance. Before, I'd have to practice hours before I go and perform just because getting all these things warmed up because there's so many different elements to the playing. Because there's parts where you're like snapping your thumb against one part of the yeah. guitar, brushing your hand against another part of the guitar, and mm. then thumping as well, while at the same time doing harmonics on the strings mm -hmm. and chord playing and you know finger tapping and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, double tapping and and everything and and all these different open tunings. So like scales are out the window because every song is in a different tuning. And it's almost like memorizing all the right notes for this tuning and this song, and then the next tuning. Every time it's like a, a made-up scale. Do you find yourself forgetting parts and then having to on the fly readjust? That does happen, yeah. yeah. Sometimes, sometimes that that can happen. It does now because like you have a brain. It's fart interesting. Or something. Yeah, that's a great thing. I think that that's what really, really separates. Uh, 
good player who who is really concentrating on what they're doing to someone who's just kind of playing a song that they already know so they're just playing that song it's when you make a mistake how you react to that if you try and you go with it and i think that's the best thing to do to just to go with it and then you might go into something completely different but keep it rolling and as maybe somebody else would just stop and say sorry or make it obvious that they've made a mistake oh, yeah that's an amateur thing that's you know mm. you you should always push through yeah 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 you've already done it keep going keep going live with your as Thelonious Fear said you've made your mistake don't make it again yes yeah yeah that's so a good you one. have to live with it <laughs> um Kenji how do you feel about the cajon as an instrument uh it's really I mean I fit fit in me yeah <laughs> because uh I used to do the martial arts and which one uh the MMA Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. What what kind of styles did you do? Uh, it's the mixed Wing Chun, Wing Chun and is that Kung Fu? Kung Fu, the Chinese Kung Fu, yeah. and some Japanese traditional Ni Japan Kung Fu, Nihon Kenpo. Kenpo. Yeah. Ah, okay. And yeah, that movement is a bit similar to the Kahon movement. Yeah. I for me. Okay. <laughs> I, Interesting. And yes, I think. Now, better than drumming. <laughs> yeah, no. it seems to be a lot more expressionate now. Because it's mm. new, in a way. Mm. And a also, it's great to be able to have him up at the front with me instead of behind, behind. me on the drum kit. Yeah. And like he says, he's all these like traditional martial arts... Movement. Move the, yeah, you... the movements that he does, it's like he, he's, he's hitting the cajon wow. from his back. Instead of just thinking about his hands, he's actually using his whole body. Oh. It's a very interesting concept. And it sounds very intense. Very intense. Yeah. Cool. Oh, like swords hitting each other. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Clack, 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 clack. In, in, in the in the in the dojo. Yeah. Ah, mm. oh, wow. See, I've like I play cajon. I've always like f tapping my fingers, ah, fingers. and like yeah. finding beats. Ah, yeah. Like I really have always liked using my hands for stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. for that kind of thing. So, also. Sometimes with the drums, drums can get really loud by accident, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Like well, with they, they cymbals and toms. And There's a certain volume. Is a drum kit has to be this volume. Yeah. And djembes can get really noisy too. Um, yeah, and it, like it kind of dominates. But uh, the cajon yeah. can sit behind. It's very yeah. versatile. Yeah. Be heard, but still. And not override. Override, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, yeah that's great. Right. Yeah, it's really good, good instrument, and it, you can use it as a seat on the train. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah, I've done that a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm really hard to carry. I mean, yeah, I with the happy drum and cajon and cymbal and cymbal stand, and so yeah, he's, he's got like a a trolley that he has to bring around with him oh, really? every show. Going up the stairs, down the stairs, gonna pick. It I just up. put it on my back, dude. Oh. I have like a strap, in my oh, bag. I see the amount of stuff he has in this trolley. Oh, <laughs> I see. I keep it minimal. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, I yeah. have to bring the guitar and the cajon. Yeah, to he the may show. as well be bringing half a drum kit. Oh, okay. <laughs> that makes sense. If you got chains, and yeah. he's got <laughs> chains. He's got symbols, symbol stands, and that happy drum. Come on. Yeah. Trolley. <laughs> it is pretty cool. The cajon has a big hole in the back. Ah, so yeah. before you like you go on stage, you can take like your wallet and your phone out of your pockets, <laughs> just throw them in the back of the cajon. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, we're wrapping it up. Uh, so uh, before we do wrap it up, do you guys have, uh, like, what do you think of the social media? Right. So uh, our social media, we have a Facebook page that we uh, we uh, keep updated as often as we can with all the shows that we're playing. We actually have the events on our Facebook page showing all the dates of our performances, what times we're playing, mm. and uh, all, all up until the end of this tour. Facebook works the best. Facebook gravy mm. train. In Japan, a lot of people use the Twitter. Yeah. Is Twitter? Do you? Is Twitter good? Uh, we don't have. We're, mm, you... we're, we're planning on on working out. Okay, so what what do Japanese people use Twitter for? For promoting their live shows? Yeah, just and, generally mm. social media. It seems like they're more into Twitter. 
than Facebook. Yeah. Which, yeah. yeah. When we, we, when we, we go to <laughs> some live house and the old young people, uh, do you have Twitter? Uh, sorry, we don't have Because Twitter wasn't very popular until kind of recently in Japan. Yeah. yeah. Oh. oh, so it's kind of hit that. Kind of uh, explosive. Period. Sure, like how Snapchat was popular in one yeah, area, and then it uh, shifted yeah. to another. Line was is popular in mm, Japan, and yeah. it's like popular in Thailand, mm -hmm. and then it becomes popular in Indonesia a little bit mm -hmm. or something like I that. See. So social media has like these expanding and contracting bubbles. So Twitter is becoming more popular mm. in Japan. In Japan, interesting, interesting. Yeah, so we'll, we'll have to sort that one out. Yeah, but so what's the but Facebook page? for now? Our Facebook page is a gravy train. So gravy, G R A V Y train, mm -hmm. T R A I N. And should they get into another keyword? Because I noticed that, that there's a gravy there train. Are, there are from, quite a few. Yeah. Uh, nine times out of ten, we should be the first one to pop up. Okay. But if you're having any more trouble, then uh, gravy train. Train. At well, Gravy Guitaring uh, Official. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, there we go. A gravy Guitar Official. And maybe yeah. also put in, like, if you're the search terming it, Gravy Train, or possibly one Australia, of our yeah. Gravy Train Acoustic. Mm. But all of these are in the notes for the show. So just yeah. click on the links, yeah. folks, if you're interested. Awesome. Um, how, so you got how much longer in Japan? Okay, so... One month? Um, Moving forward? My leaving date is January the 6th. January the 6th. So we got pretty much a month left of our tour. Okay. Mm. And we have one last show, and this will be probably our biggest show in Tokyo on the 5th. Of January. On the 5th of January. And that will yeah. be at Cyclone. Cyclone. Shibuya Cyclone. Sh in Shibuya. Okay. Mm. It's a nice uh, rock, big rock live house. That the, is the, the big biggest, one. The biggest yeah. live house that we played at. You have to get tickets from that, but you can find the details on our Facebook page once we get closer to that date. Okay. All right. Anything to add? Did we cover Gravy Train, Guitar Style, Your Connection, Music Back Home? Oh, oh we've got an interesting story to tell, actually. Okay, oh, yeah. let's okay. do it. Let's do it. <laughs> so, uh, so we played in uh, Chiba. Chiba? Chiba? Chiba. Yeah. Topaz. In a, a place called Topaz Bar. Oh, yeah, Mickey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. oh, you want cool. a beer? Ah, yeah, sure. Cheers. Um, so this was a couple of weeks ago. And, um, so we're very... Our sound is very big when we play. And we push out a hell of a lot of energy. And uh, so what ended up happening at the show is we actually killed someone. Oh, good. Someone died during our performance. What? Literally dropped on the floor dead. Really? Had a, I think he had a heart attack. Is a bit of an elderly fellow, but um, we got stopped near the end of our set, and I was thinking, well, why are we oh getting stopped? Goodness. Oh, there's I someone, there's joking. someone dead on the floor. Yeah, no, I'm not joking. This, we, we literally we killed someone and during the our performance. Come in and yeah, paramedics, the AD, his ambulance body came and... trying to resuscitate him to no avail. They took him away to the hospital, and then, and then a uh, uh, topper's bar. They told us to continue our set after that, which was very strange. Wow, and we the had show one, one must last go song. On. The show must go on. We had one last song to play for that night, and it's a song we played called Still Awake. Okay. After we played that song, we heard um, from the hospital that the guy is alive. Oh, he yeah. made it? Yeah. He came back. Yeah. Came back. Luckily. We sent energy <laughs> to the hospital. Spiritual rock. Yeah. <laughs> you never know if it works or not, man. You may as well try it, you yeah. know? Yeah. So that was, that was very interesting. Holy so I'm sure shit. I'll be telling that for many years. That's a good one. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So we, wow. didn't, we didn't kill anyone last night, just the guitar. <laughs> 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 All right. So thank you very much for being on the podcast. Gentlemen, it's been an honor and a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. This beer is really weird. What? What? This beer. This beer is really weird. It's really, like, just weird. And that's the show, folks. Thank you very much for listening. Um, I appreciate it. Remember to like and subscribe and share. Uh, I really noticed that when people share a link, um, it, it attracts um, listeners from other parts of the world. Uh, I don't know how these social media algorithms work, but 
if you share the link to your social media, it will expand the amount of people that will set eyes on it. And then they can listen to it too. And so if then they know somebody who's coming to Japan, it will help spread the word. So please consider it. Please consider it. It's a very small action that helps me out a lot. So have a good one, folks.、Uh, take it easy and catch you next time. I don't know what to do, but I don't know what to do. 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 Ho Chi Minh de Atta Ona no Ko, Nama wa Sebu. O Kimi Iri no Suji wa Eleven, Boku wa Ikibu. Seven Eleven, Ikibu. Chan Biru, Chan Biru. The Tai no Chan Biru, Chan to Yo Para Ta Yo. Mina Yo Para O Ka Ne. それで、あゆたや雪きどちけとかって、歩き回っても酔っぱらってたよ。みんな見てたけどね。メコンカウロイにだって、歴史の長さに感動だ。みんな気にしないけどね。みんな気にしないけどね。ホチミンで会った女の子、名前はセーブン。いないところはいいね。Bigger, 